Today we're going to be creating picture tubes, not to be confused with PSP images, which are also tubes, but that's T-U-B-E-S. These are tube files, T-U-B-S. The first thing that we're going to want to establish is how many do we want to make on an image? We could do just one if you like for say your signature that you would want to stamp on work that you do or maybe you want groupings like this. What you have to do is to consider the total amount of pixels that this image is made up of and here it's 500 by 500. So I can divide that by two, uh, two across and two down, and I can actually get four on this image. If you wanted, oh, say, 12 cells, and you wanted to put snowflakes or water drops or something like that on there, make your image 400 by 300 pixels, and that would give you a spacing of 100 pixels each or 12 cells. So let's just try to duplicate this and maybe it will become a little more clear of what I'm trying to show you. Let's, let's do a new image, 500 by 500, with a raster background and a transparent Z in the background. And here we have it. Now the first thing we do is to go up to View and we click Grid. And this puts these grid lines in here. Well, they're too small to fit any little image that I want in here. So what I'm going to do is to change that. Change the grid guide and snap properties. And you do that through here. This up here is the default settings position at 10. The current image settings is 10, as you can see, and I'm going to change that to 250 each. And that will give me my 500 pixels across and down. And now you can see, here's my division line. So I can get an image in here no larger than 250 by 250, which is what I've done with these butterflies. The next thing we want to do is to bring up our images that we're going to be putting in here. Now you could be putting in snowflakes or any anything that you want really, but let's do some copy and pasting here very quickly if I can. And I'll move this one up into this position. I will copy this one and paste it and pull it down here and I'll bring this one up and copy and paste it and put it down here and the last one as you can see I haven't made this one small enough to fit in my last box and, and I've left this purposely so I could show you how I got these um, images to put in my tube uh, file here. I went, I went to my site and I picked up a pretty butterfly that was tubed by Pamela and I made sure that the tubed image is highlighted and because it's so large I am going to resize this by, oh, I've got 85%, I'm not sure. I'll put resize all layers. Nope, that's still not right. What I found I have to do is go to image, resize, and resize it by 50%. And another way I could have done that is to click on here and put it in pixels and I could have made it oh say 250 by two well even less than 250 but that's another way to do it 
but I'm going to do it percent wise and I'm going to make this image of Pamela is 50% smaller and resize all layers. So all the layers are now resized. I'm going to copy and paste that in and see if it's the size I want. It still isn't, so let's just resize this. Uncheck the resize all layers. Uh, that, that's better. So what you do is just play around with your image sizes, and you can do this in advance of uh, creating a picture tube. So now that we have our butterflies in place, the next thing we're going to do is to right-click in our Layers palette and Merge Visible. So we only have one layer in our um, Layers palette that is showing. Now we're going to go up to File and we're going to Export as a Picture Tube. And this box comes up, Export Picture Tube. Look over here on the left, it says Cell Arrangement. And what I want to do is put in how many cells there are. I have two cells up and down, and I have two cells across, making four cells total, which are these four butterflies. And as you can see, each cell is 250. I'm going to give my tube a name. I think I will name it Four Butterflies. And let's check and see where it's going to go. Save to, I've got it set to save to my Corel Paint Shop Pro 16 picture tubes. And that's um, just where I want it, and it is um, being pointed to Corel up here in this first line under picture tubes. So we're all set here. We click OK, and now to save this, we click OK. And now we're going to check it out. Here's my Corel Paint Shop Pro folder, 16, and we are doing picture tubes. So let's take a look. And here is the image for butterflies tubes. So we know that this has gone where we want it to go. So the next thing we will do is to create another new background, a new image, transparent background. <coughs> and we can click off on this grid now. And let's give it a uh, flood fill of a white background here. And now let's go to our tube tool right here in, in our tools bar and let's go looking for four butterflies. And right here we have it. Now this is what happens when I start to click. They are just clicking randomly as you can see. And it looks like we get, well, not really. Here's three of the, this, and we're right back to the uh, swallowtail again. But they're just random, um, and you can use these in a, in a background if you like and make something really pretty with it. Or you can just click off on the side of one, kind of know where they're going to uh, come up next, which one is coming up next, I mean. And um, <clears throat> that's one way to use this. Another way would be if you um, clicked your butterflies um, on a background <clears throat> that is transparent, you could always go to your selections tool and select around that butterfly. Oops, I didn't select all the way around it, did I? Select around that butterfly, click copy, and in a blank space I could put paste as new image, and there I have that individual butterfly. So that's one, that's another way for you to use this. 
So having tubes is really fun and useful, and I hope that this tutorial has been useful to you. Bye!